I'd like to talk a bit about the 86cc project and the direction that it's headed in, as well as make an announcement regarding that. So, when this project started, there were four major points um, that I was either curious about or concerned about. The first one was, I needed something that was equal to uh, the 103cc that I was running, at least equal to it. Um, obviously, I'd prefer more power if possible, but it had to be an equal. The second was, can a hyper race kit be detuned successfully? Third, can you actually ride a hyper race kit, uh, meaning real distance on the roads, um, not just around the block or on a track? And finally, I was curious how the aluminum cylinder kit would treat me because I haven't had great experience with them in the past. So, to the first point, um, whether or not it was equal to the 103cc, I would say it was a pretty good match. Zero to whatever acceleration times um, have been pretty much right on the nose uh, with the 103 versus the 86. And top speed is probably just a tiny bit better with the 86 because it's more willing to rev than the 103. And if you take a set gear set, I've got 11.2 to 1 gears uh, I was using in both setups. So you put more RPM with the same gearing and the one with more RPM, assuming there's the power to back it up, will usually win in a speed contest. So the 86cc has actually done a little better there. So the first point, no complaints, it's worked out pretty well. On to the second point of can it be detuned. I would also say that that one is a success because I've got a kit that should be probably 12 to 14,000 RPM for its peak power and I'm running it at 10 to 11,000 RPM basically and everything seems to be going quite well. Um, the reason I wasn't sure is because sometimes if you try to mismatch parts it makes no power um, and it really just doesn't work. But in this case the Hyper Race kit has worked quite well with a uh, I guess what would be kind of a mid-race exhaust for a large cylinder and a lightened stock flywheel and a stock CDI um, in place of a racing ignition. So I've been happy with that. The third point, uh, can you actually ride a hyper race? That seems to be a yes as well, at least in its current form. Um, the jury's still out on how it will work if it is a true hyper race. That I'm not sure about. Um, but as a detuned hyper race, as I've shown you, I've taken it to car shows a few nights and I also took it on a long ride on open roads and I've had no issues with it at any point during those rides. So that one seems, it seems to actually work um, for riding around, which has surprised me because I thought maybe the large bridged exhaust port um, or being an aluminum cylinder kit would be an issue. So that brings me right to the last uh, point. How would the aluminum cylinder treat me? And so far, so good. Uh, definitely I have not tried to push it to its uh, maximum lean power. Um, I've tried to stay on the rich side at any point. Uh, that's with the main jet as well as with the needle and pilot and everything. I really try to make sure I'm not pushing it to lean because I don't want to find out what happens when it is running lean. So on all accounts there I'd say it's a pass um, with the can you actually ride a hyper race point not being a sure thing because again it's not a true hyper race I would say at this point. Since those things have actually worked out pretty well and I've had a little experience riding this around um, now I'm curious to find out what does happen if it goes into full hyper race mode. And I don't mean I'm going to have this thing crazy ported and, and go to extremes necessarily, at least certainly not right away. But basically what I mean is if the stock ignition is replaced with a lightweight racing ignition and the piece pipe is replaced with a, an exhaust that is more intended for a hyper race build. So something that most likely will rev around 12 to 14,000 RPM instead of 10 to 11,000 RPM. Um, so I do kind of think that 
I'm going to lose some of the things that I like about it right now, like the uh, reliability or rideability. Um, I think it's probably going to turn into more of a light switch throttle between the effects of a uh, really quick throttle response with a lightweight ignition, uh, as well as the timing curve that is likely associated with that, and a very peaky exhaust. But I'm willing to find out how it goes uh, and try it, and I'm just really curious to see if it makes a huge difference in, from what it is now, or if it's more of a mild step up. I think it's going to make a pretty big difference. I really hope it does for the amount of money involved um, to change the exhaust ignition and everything else and the time that will probably be involved in that. Um, but it's one of those things that I'm just going to have to see it for myself and find out and hopefully you guys will follow along and see how it goes. This isn't going to happen overnight because unfortunately I just don't have $500 or $1,000 sitting around that I can throw into the scooter right now. But it will happen at some point, um, I just can't give you an exact timeline. Related to that, ScooterTuning.ca, they're a big scooter parts company from Canada. Sell everything from uh, stock replacement to hyper race parts. They're actually where I got the 86cc kit from in the first place. Anyway, they contacted me and said they'd like to work with me in some respect. And we sent a few emails uh, back and forth. and. We put together something pretty casual, but I think it'll be mutually beneficial. So, they're willing to give me the parts that I need uh, to finish this up and make it a hyper race at a discounted rate. They're not giving me parts, but I can get them at a discount below retail price. Um, and in exchange, I'll put their logo on the screen for a few seconds um, and mention them when I feel it's appropriate. Uh, this isn't like a full-blown sponsorship or anything at this point. Um, just something that I think will work for both of us. They'll get a little exposure, hopefully, and I can save a little bit of money on parts. So, big thanks to those guys for getting in touch with me. I appreciate it. Um, check those guys out. Also, I wanted to say uh, I wouldn't deal with them if they weren't someone that I thought would treat everybody right that goes there because I've dealt with them on my own uh, for years and they've always treated me right and that's not with me saying hey I'm doing videos or run a website or anything like that they've just treated me right as a regular customer um, I just didn't want to put a logo on the screen and you guys and then you guys think oh great now he's a part salesman and we can't trust what he says because that's absolutely not what it is um, like I said it's just a pretty simple mutually beneficial deal for us um, I give I put in the good word for them a little bit I save a little bit of cash um, and hopefully it helps me turn this thing into a hyper race so with that said, moving on, there's just one more thing that I wanted to cover uh, before we end this video. One more quick thing. Uh, way back in 2012, I did something I called Project 90. And that was a 90cc engine in the same scooter that you're looking at. Um, it was an air-cooled version, but I tested a bunch of different stuff on it. Anything from carburetor size to different exhausts, air filters, porting, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, one part of that was a video where I compared the uh, sound level of the exhaust pipes. Um, and I used a few of them on there, so I just compared all of them and the stock pipe. So I had a comment uh, on one of my videos. Someone asked me if it would be possible for me to do this scooter uh, with this exhaust the same way to see what the difference would be in all of those and luckily I had made notes um, of exactly how I had it all set up so it's not really a big deal and I figured I'd do it real quick um, partially for my own curiosity as well so you can see I've measured out uh, the distance from the rear corner of the scooter at six feet to this uh, sound level meter and luckily I have the same meter that I had at the time so everything should be pretty pretty much the same. I mean, I'm in the same garage bay. That should be the same stool and everything. Um, so it should be fairly accurate to that. And I'm just going to check it um, at idle at 5,000 RPM and quick wide open throttle just to see how it will compare with what I uh, did in that other video.
So here are the results from the old 2012 test combined with what I just did with the uh, TPR86CC and this version of the piece pipe. And I gotta say I'm surprised because I've always looked at this uh, redesigned piece pipe with a Penton style muffler um, as a quiet exhaust. And it turns out this thing is pretty loud compared to everything else. So the old piece pipe, um, it had the more traditional stinger that would wrap around and then the silencer, the tube-like silencer that would come up here. And that thing kind of roared. It had a lot of uh, mid-range sound. Um, sounded really nice, but it really sounded like a roar. Uh, seemed really loud to me. This one on the other hand, the Penton style muffler that uh, John put on here, it uses tubes and chambers to quiet it down. And you, it really does silence that roar, but then you get that classic uh, really sharp two-stroke ring. And I think that two-stroke, that ring or ping or whatever you call it, um, is what's making it so loud. You don't get a lot of that mid-range sound, but you really hear that sharp ringing sound. Um, and it probably also, from my perception, um, when the old one bent around, it was then aimed up this way, uh, whereas this one is way out the back of the scooter. So probably from my perception, I imagine coming out the back makes it uh, seem quieter as well. But yeah, I was really surprised to see that, so I'm glad I checked that. Um, it's stuff like that that I find interesting. So anyway, thanks for watching, um, and stay tuned to see how everything goes from here out.